Welcome to another class in the series of Ibn Ezra and the Parasha. My name is Rabbi Nathan Dweck. And this week in Parashat Bo, we're going to look at the function of Aharon as spokesman to Bnei Yisrael and Paro. We're going to look at a passage and a comment of Ibn Ezra in this week's Parasha, and then work backwards to look at comments regarding Aharon's function as a Nabi and as a spokesperson to Bnei Yisrael and Paro throughout Parashiyot, Shemot, and Va'era and looking at Ibn Isa's comments there. So the Torah says in this week's parasha, it indicates, Moshe paro. Both Moshe and Aaron come to Paro, Vayomeru elav. And they both said to him, Ko amar Adonai Adonai right? Both of them come to Paro in front of Paro and say to him that God, God of the Hebrews, said, how long will you refuse to humble yourself before me? Let my people go that they may worship me. And Ibn Ezra comments over here. Yada'nu ki lo yavo Moshe el paro belo Aaron imo ki wa melis. We know that if the Torah simply told us, vayavo Moshe el paro, that Moshe came to paro, we know that he came with Aaron because he is the melis. He is the interpreter. He is the speaker on behalf of Moshe to paro. So why does it mention Aaron here? Here it's specifically pointed out for its own reason, because as the Torah tells us that after they gave their warning, they're both brought back. And then finally, when Paro rejects the offer of Moshe for Bnei Sel to leave with everybody, including the cattle, they're both kicked out of the palace of Paro. And therefore, since Moshe and Aaron were both physically brought back and then removed, therefore the Torah brings up both Moshe and Aaron. Now, related to this point that we all know that Moshe would not come to Paro without Aaron, we need to take a look at Aaron's role and how Aaron's role developed through the years and through the stages in terms of his relationship with Bnei Israel and how he spoke to Paro. How did Aaron reach this role? So in Shemot Perek Dalet, we know that Moshe Rabbeinu is refusing to come to Paro and take Bnei Israel out of Israel. And in his final refusal, he says, Shelah nabi send somebody else. Who is this someone else that Moshe is referring to? Says Ibn Ezra, Ve'atam shishlah zeh shibut be'yad Aaron achiv she'u ish devarim. Essentially, Moshe was telling HaKadosh Baruch Hu, send Aaron, my brother. He is a man of words. Ke'enenu kevad kevad lashon ve'hu ragir lehi nabe v'Yisrael an important point we might not all be aware of, that Aharon was used to prophesying for Bnei Israel. The Bnei Israel continues, V'chatu b'yehizkel ki Hashem shalach navi b'Yisrael lifne bo Moshe Adonenu before Moshe Rabbeinu became a navi for Bnei Israel before the burning bush, already Aharon was a navi for Bnei Israel. And it's written in the Torah. So we know that Moshe, sorry, that Aaron and God are communicating. Also Moshe saying, he's older than me, my brother. And then maybe Moshe is saying to God as well, he's older than me. He's in Avi already for Bnei Yisrael. They recognize him. He can speak unlike me. And therefore, God had to tell Moshe, don't worry, Moshe. When Aharon comes to see you, he will be happy with the fact that you were nominated as the Navi for Bnei Yisrael. Now, where in Yehezkel do we find Aharon being the Navi for Bnei Yisrael? It says in Yehezkel, where it's listing the Averot of Bnei Israel, how in Misraim they did not get rid of their Avodah Zarah. And it says that God said, I was ready to take Bnei Israel out of Egypt. 
נשאתי ידי להם להוסיאה מארץ מצרים. ואומר עליהם, and I said to the Israel, get rid of your עבודה זרה. Through who was this said? Rashi on the spot says this was Aharon HaKohen. And Ibn Ezra here is interpreting as well. When it says, I told Bnei Yisrael to get rid of their Avodah Zara, this is God communicating through a Navi. Who is this Navi? This is Aharon. Aharon was told by God to go to Bnei Yisrael and tell them, get rid of your Avodah Zara, and they did not listen. So already Aharon was a Navi for Bnei Yisrael. We see this comment come up again. When Moshe says, Lo ish devarim anochi, and it's hard for him to speak. So he thought that maybe God would make him a sign to get rid of his inability to speak, his heavy tongue. And all of a sudden God tells him, He says, I'll send Aharon Ahicha Halevi. And he'll know what to say. The Torah there says, I know that he speaks. What does that mean? I know that he speaks. Meaning, I know God says that Aharon is already a Nabi who speaks to the people. However, he will become your spokesperson to Am Yisrael, telling Moshe not to worry. This clarifies to us Aharon, Aharon's role, his prior role, which we might not have thought about. That, that Those words mean Aharon is already a Nabi for Bnei Yisrael in the past, previously, before Moshe ever was appointed as a leader for Am Yisrael. Now, in Shemot Perek Dalit Pasuk Kavzayim, it says, Lo hayam nave Aharon ki en sorech, meaning that Aharon did not get the nevuot when there's no need, meaning Moshe was the shaliach el paro. What is Ibn Izzah talking about over here? Well, it's important to realize that up until now, Moshe was supposed to be the Shaliyah of Paro. And only when Moshe will complain that he's unable to speak to Paro is Aaron appointed the spokesperson to Paro. Right? Right now, Aaron is the melis al ken Moshe lo tiberi misel le olam rak ayed Aaron. Important point. Moshe never spoke to Am Yisrael forever. Ibn Ezra says, rather through the speech of Aaron. Aaron was his interpreter. Aaron was his spokesperson. But it's important to realize that at this point in the Torah, Aaron is only the spokesperson between Moshe and Bnei Yisrael. Later, we'll see that his role develops. Where does his role develop? In Perek Vav, after Moshe comes to Paro, and now Paro makes Bnei Yisrael's work more difficult. And then Bnei Yisrael do not listen to him as well now because of their more difficult work. She, what happens? Moshe complains to God in last week's parasha. Firstly, Aharon is appointed as the interpreter, as the spokesperson to Bnei Israel. Now, when Moshe is complaining that he can't even speak to Paro, now God appoints Aharon 
Yedaber el paro. And now, Kashiyah Faresh Od al Kinish Tadefush in him be divor. Now at this point, Aharon will be a milis between Moshe and Paro. So there's development here. Think about the role of Aharon. First, Aharon was an avi for Bnei Yisrael. Bnei Yisrael do not listen to Aharon. They don't heed his word to get rid of Avod Azara. Now Moshe is appointed as a leader for Bnei Yisrael. Moshe complains, send my brother Aharon. He already knows how to speak. Hashem says, I know that. However, now at this point, Aaron will be your spokesperson to Bnei Israel. Okay. Now later on, Moshe says, Paro is not going to listen to me if Bnei Israel is not listening to me. And at that point, in the end of Perek Vav, beginning of Perek Zayin, Aaron is appointed also the spokesperson to Paro. And therefore, again, even though Aharon was older than Moshe, Gadol Beshanim, and he was a Navi for Bnei Yisrael before Moshe came along, Hashem appoints Moshe to be the leader, but it's Aharon that's the spokesperson to Bnei Yisrael. And understand that when Aharon comes in front of Bnei Yisrael to speak to them, they already recognize him. They already know him as a Navi. Right? Aaron is already in Navi before Moshe comes on the scene. In front of Paro, when Moshe complains that he's unable to speak, that's when Aaron comes in to speak to Paro, which brings us back to our original Pasuk. That's why Ibn Ezra comments, Yadanu kilo yavo Moshe paro belo Aaron imo, because Moshe complained he's kevad be, he cannot speak in front of Paro, and therefore Aaron developed in terms of his role of not just being the spokesperson for Moshe in front of Bnei Yisrael, but also in front of Paro. But now I hope you got an overview of who Aharon was. He didn't just jump on the scene. He didn't just become someone who was able to speak. He was always able to speak. And Moshe even argued that he should be the leader. However, ultimately it's Aharon who becomes joyous and happy for his brother, who becomes a leader and happily takes on this role of not only being the spokesperson of Moshe to Bnei Yisrael, but as well the spokesperson in front of Paro. Baruch Adonai Le'olam. Amen ve'amen.